Hello there my fellow gamers, AMD just did it again and with their flagship RDNA 3 mobile GPU, the RX 7900M, put together a very competitive product that you might have trouble buying. But that is a problem for the future, so let's just focus on the here and now. And guys, we have a lot to talk about. This absolute unit of a gaming laptop is the Alienware M18. And while we already reviewed the Intel and Nvidia equipped high-end config a few months back, it is time for the all AMD variant today. When Team Red announced their fastest mobile GPU today, they set out to compete with the RTX 4080. And if that particular mission was a success, well, we will tell you within the next few minutes. But let us start at the beginning and talk specs for this puppy. As of today, the M18 is available in a wide range of hardware configurations, with lots of different AMD and Intel CPUs to choose from. Our sample comes with the Ryzen 9 7945HX. Unfortunately, the X3D variant is nowhere to be seen, which is quite a shame since it performed so well in our review of the SCAR 70. On the GPU side of things, your options are plentiful, ranging across the entire Team Green lineup and the star of the show today, the RX 7900M. The Navi 31 chip is based on the RDNA 3 architecture and can already rain on its Team Green competitors parade with a much more generous 16GB of video memory. To properly feed the high-end silicon with data, our sample comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 5600 RAM, a 1TB SSD and your choice of either a 480Hz Full HD or 165Hz QHD panel. If you were to spec a similar configuration but with Intel's 3980HX and the RTX 4080, it seems like the all AMD variant is already on track to cater to the more budget-oriented crowd amongst you guys, with a pretty insane price difference if the 7900 can keep up with Team Green's offering. As I have already mentioned, we reviewed the M18 quite fully already, and since this one uses the same chassis, I would kindly ask you to check out our original review for a broader general overview. But I know we are all pressed for time these days, so let me give you a quick reminder what is on offer with the beefy 18-inch gamer. Chassis quality is excellent, and as you already know, I like Alienware's design a lot. For me, it is the perfect blend of a clean, yet still special design, with tasteful RGB implementation all around. In regards to ports, this one is a true desktop replacement, with two USB-A's and a network check on the left, a single USB-C on the right, and two additional USB-C's, a full-size SD card reader with very snappy transfer rates, HDMI 2.1, mini display port, and of course the power connector in the back. In the maintenance department you get your two SODEMs and while the Intel variant got a total of four NVMe slots, our AMD sample has to make do with three, which I guess is still plenty for all of your storage needs. As it was with the Intel model, you can once more choose between frames or resolution with the two available display models. Both panels are alright, while also not offering a lot to write home about. The competition has much more going for it with brighter and simply better screens across the board with the Helios 18 for example even offering a mini LED option. But enough of that and let's finally talk performance. The 7945HX is an old acquaintance by now and as per usual the 16 real cores in Team Red's flagship silicon can easily keep up with Intel's high-end options. In our rating, the M18 with the AMD CPU can score a clear win over Team Blue with higher multi-core scores at the expense of lower single-core results. As always, if you are after individual scores, please head on over to our written review. My colleague Alan put the alien behemoth properly through its paces. While our measured PC mark results are amongst the highest we have ever seen in a laptop, our experience with the M18 was not all sunshine and rainbows. Unfortunately, this is a somewhat typical behavior for new Alienware models, and during our time with this one, we have encountered several bugs and glitches, which can be quite frustrating with a new machine. Amongst other things, we encountered boot problems when external screens are connected, and at some occasions the internal screen would just go black, requiring a reboot. We can only hope that Dell can iron out these things as quickly as possible, since it would be quite a shame if such things were to distract from an otherwise pretty excellent performance experience. Right, folks, let's talk GPU. While AMD left the upper mid range to high end segment in Nvidia script for the majority of the year, the 7900M aims to at least partly break it to give us users some much needed competition. As I mentioned in the beginning, the Navi chip was perceived as a direct competitor to Nvidia's RTX 4080. And in our 3D mark rating, that's pretty much spot on. 
And not only that, but the generational uplift compared to last year's RX 6850M XT is also pretty impressive with around 50% more performance. Unfortunately, our Blender runs refuse to work, which aligns with my experience when I have used AMD cards in the past for our video production. When it works, it is a solid experience, but driver support is very hit and miss at times, making Team Green's options the much more obvious choice if you need your laptop for work. Of course, your mileage will vary depending on what you do with your laptop. So how about some virtual entertainment? In our 1080p rating, a combination of older games which are much more CPU bound, the 4080 is quite a bit ahead no matter if the competition is utilizing Intel or AMD CPUs. In something more recent, the performance difference is as always very dependent on the title and the resolution you're playing in, but for the most part the 7900M delivered what was promised. Ray tracing is still Team Green's playing ground, and while the new Navi card improved significantly over its predecessors, Nvidia is plain and simple at least a generation ahead. The same holds true for things like upscaling and frame generation. While FSR 2 is widely available in many different titles, DLSS mostly offers better picture quality and performance results. And while FSR 3 is here to compete with frame generation, it is only available in a handful of games as of now. Fan noise for the all AMD M18 is pretty much on par with the Intel and Nvidia config. In the Alienware's overdrive mode, it's a proper jet engine, but both the performance and the balance profile are very competitive, and given the minimal performance loss, you can easily stay away from the highest mode without a problem. Power consumption is also something that should be addressed with the 7900M. And while the 7945HX needs a lot less wattage to keep up or even outperform Intel CPU offerings, it is the other way around in the GPU department. With a whopping 180 watts in peak load scenarios, the 7900M will most likely be reserved for larger notebooks like the M18 that can at least somewhat rein in the first silicon. For more details about power consumption, please once more check out our written article on the website. We have a lot more data around this topic over there. Unfortunately, power consumption has a direct impact on battery life, and while the Intel model delivered a pretty respectable time away from the wall, the all AMD M18's results are simply embarrassing. We can only hope that this is something that can be fixed in software in the near future, otherwise you would have to treat this one as a portable desktop with an emergency battery. Alright folks, that shall be it for today. So can AMD finally compete in the higher end segments of the mobile laptop GPU market? Well, based on what we have seen today, kind of. In rasterized games, the 7900M can keep up with the 4080 and it does so at a much lower cost of entry, at least for the M18. But as soon as we take ray tracing and things like DLSS, frame generation and better support and performance in content creation applications into account, the story changes a little bit and the Nvidia option might be the safer, more reliable and future-proof bet here overall. So as always, it comes down to what you are looking for. So please folks, I am eager to hear your opinion. Sound off in the comments below what you think about the RX 7900M. Thanks a ton for watching, do not forget to leave your like and sub on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.